Welcome to video number three for Physics 102. This video is on the normal force. You may want a copy of the problem solving worksheet with you as you go through this video. In essence, this video deals with the question, I set a book on a table. Why doesn't it fall through it? I mean, there's a force of gravity down. So what keeps the book from just falling through the table? Let's analyze this rather seemingly simple situation based upon what we know of physics thus far. Turns out that by doing so, we're going to discover an entirely new force, the normal force. So what do we know about this situation? Well, the book is just sitting on the table. So the book's velocity isn't changing with time, it's always zero. So we know that the book is not accelerating. We can write this mathematically as a equals zero. Notice I have a little vector symbol on top of my a. This reminds me that acceleration is a vector. So a is equal to zero. What does that imply? I'll give you a hint. Think in terms of Newton's second law. Well, we know that Newton's second law is f equals ma. And as we've already discussed in this particular case, the acceleration of the book is equal to zero. Putting these two things together, we see that therefore the net force on the book must also be zero. Writing this in words, we can say that the vector sum of the forces on the book must be zero. Well, what forces do we know that could be acting on the book? Well, the only force we've covered so far is gravity. Now the book is resting on a table which is not very tall in comparison to the radius of the Earth. So we can express the force of gravity in this case as just mg. We don't need the whole gmm over r squared. That'd be a little overkill. Kind of like building a birdhouse with a sledgehammer. But the weight equals mg is only one force. And we've already concluded that the sum of the forces has to be equal to zero. This means that there has to be another force of equal magnitude an opposite direction also acting on the book. We call this force the normal force and use a little n as its symbol. The normal force is an example of a contact force as it arises because of the contact between the physics book and the table. Using our little subscript notation we say that the normal force is on the book from the table. Now again, we've already concluded that the sum of these forces must be equal to zero. We can express this mathematically as the normal force between the book and the table must be equal and opposite to the weight force between the book and the earth. So the normal force are of equal magnitude and opposite direction. Does that mean that the normal force and the weight force are a pair of forces in accordance with Newton's third law? No, you must remember that Newton's third law only applies to forces between the same pairs of objects and the normal force is between the book and the table while the weight force is between the book and the earth. So while they have the same magnitude and opposite direction, they do not form a pair in accordance with Newton's third law. So just by considering a book on a table, we've already discovered a new force this normal force that arises from contact between two surfaces. Let's explore it a little bit more by considering a different example. What if you have two books, a chem book and a physics book? You know the masses of both of them. What is the normal force from the table on the physics book? For this, let's use our problem solving worksheet, beginning with focus on the problem. The first question is what physical principles are you gonna use? Well here, we're talking about forces. So it kind of makes sense that perhaps Newton's laws are the physical principles we should be using. Now let's look at the approximations or constraints part of the problem. Just as before, both the objects are on top of a table that's not very tall relative to the radius of the Earth. And so we can simplify the force of gravity to just mg. Again, the full gmm over r squared would be a little overkill. Second off, everything is stationary, just as before. So another constraint is that the acceleration of both objects has to be equal to zero.
Now let's move to the second step of our problem solving framework, describe the physics. The first thing to do within this step is to determine any coordinate systems or free body diagrams. For a coordinate system, let's label the vertical direction y. Most of our forces, I suspect, are going to be in the vertical direction. We know that weight points towards the center of the Earth. So let's call it y, and let's make positive y going up. Now let's start drawing free body diagrams for the different objects in the problem, beginning with the chemistry book. The chemistry book has mass, so experiences a force of gravity down towards the center of the Earth its weight. This weight is between the chemistry book and the earth. Now one of our constraints was that the acceleration of the chemistry book was equal to zero, which means that the sum of the forces on the chemistry book must also be equal to zero. Thus there must be some kind of force pushing up on the chemistry book in opposition to its weight. This force arises due to the contact between the chemistry book and the physics book, and thus we call it again a normal force between the chemistry book and the physics book. Now that we're basically done with the chemistry book, I can't think of any other forces that are acting on it, let's try and draw a free body diagram for the physics book. Your physics book also has mass and so also has a weight pulling it down, a weight between the physics book and the earth. I'm going to go out on a limb and say your physics book is heavier than your chemistry book, so I've drawn the weight vector longer for the physics book than I have for the chemistry book. Now the physics book pushes up on the chemistry book. Thus, by Newton's third law, the chemistry book must also push down on the physics book. Since this is also a contact force, it arises because of the fact that the chemistry book and the physics book are touching each other, we also call it a normal force, only this time this is a force on the physics book from the chemistry book, as opposed to the one over here, which is a force on the chemistry book from the physics book. These do form a Newton's third law pair because it's between the same pair of objects, the physics book and the chemistry book. Again, let's go to our constraints. We know that the acceleration of the physics book is equal to zero it's not moving. Thus, the sum of the forces on the physics book must also be equal to zero. Therefore, in order to balance out these two forces, the weight of the physics book as it's pulled down by the earth, and the normal force of the physics book from the chemistry book, there must be some force pointing up. This would be a normal force on the physics book from the table. Now let's move to the second part of the describe the physics step, determining the relevant equations. Since the sum of the forces has to be equal to zero, we know that the weight of the chemistry book as it's pulled down by the earth, plus the normal force on the chemistry book from the physics book has to be equal to zero. Due to our approximation that all of this is happening near the surface of the earth, we know that we can write the weight of the chemistry book as just the mass of the chemistry book times g, where g is our 9.8 meters per second squared. Now let's turn our attention to the physics book. The physics book is also not moving, so that we know the sum of the forces on the physics book is also equal to zero. The normal force on the physics book from the table is up, so it gets a, look, it gets a positive sign. The weight of the physics book from the earth points down, so we give it a negative sign, and the normal force on the physics book from the chemistry book is also down, so we'll give that a negative sign. And again, this, all of these together have to be equal to zero. Just as with the chemistry book, we know that the weight of the physics book as it's pulled down by the earth is going to be the mass of the physics book times little g, 9.8 meters per second squared. Finally, we can use Newton's third law to tell us that the normal force on the physics book from the chemistry book is going to be equal and opposite to the normal force on the chemistry book from the physics book. Now let's move to the third step of our problem solving framework, developing a logical chain of equations. We can see straight off the bat that these two equations here give us a force straight off the bat, 
we know both the masses of the books, and we know that little g is 9.8 in each case. So one of those is probably a good place to start. I'm going to start with the weight of the chemistry book. Now that I will have the weight of the chemistry book, I can use this equation here to get us the normal force on the chemistry book from the physics book. So let's take that and do that next. Hmm, what to do next? Well, this equation here gives us the normal force of the physics book on the chem on the physics book from the chemistry book in terms of the normal force on the chemistry book from the physics book. This would make a nice bridge from going talking about the chemistry book to talking about the physics book. Now I can't quite use this equation yet because while I have the normal force on the physics book from the chemistry book taken care of, I'd still need to take care of the weight of the physics book due to the pull of the earth. But as we already said, this equation here gives us that without any additional ado. So now I have everything in this equation, the weight and this normal force. So now I can put everything together and solve for the thing I actually wanted, which was the normal force of the physics book on the physics book from the table. I'll leave the next step executing the plan as part of your quiz.